Oh, we're good? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we're still, I just, you know, if you're not here for my awkward talk, like, are you even here? Probably not. <laughs> it's um, fine. So this is Cece, Cassidy, <laughs> hard, golden, hard tongue. Yes. We go way back, mm-hmm. like, to birth. My sister. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, which some people don't. I know. I always find it weird when people it. don't know. know. But like, how do you not know? But I guess that would make sense. We have different last names. And yep. um, so <laughs> Cece is my baby sister. Mm-hmm. We're eight years apart. We are. And people think we're twins. Yeah. People say that we're twins all the time. Everywhere we go. <laughs> and um, she, so let's start with you just kind of giving a quick little rundown of your story, like how you came to be where you are. Okay. So I was, I played volleyball in high school and was really active and like loved it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I hurt my knee and then I decided not to try out my senior year, I Mm -hmm. think. And then, or yeah, I think. And then, um, I didn't try out and I didn't (laughs) do anything my senior year of high school. And, um, then I went to college and continued to not do anything. <laughs> and so I put on 60 pounds, I guess. Like I put on quite a bit of weight, um, you know, just like the typical college freshman, like freshman going 60. Yeah, going out too much, <laughs> all of that, eating, yeah. eating cr- like crap. Eating whole pizzas. All so, of that yeah. <laughs> so um, I decided that I wanted to lose weight. Um, so I was in Lubbock. Hallie and David were also in Lubbock, and so I knew David had a CrossFit gym, so I, and I knew he was losing weight also, so mm-hmm. I asked him to help me lose weight, and he told me what to do, and Literally. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I did it and lost um, 60 pounds, and I guess I've kept it off for like three years, mm-hmm. almost, or I think like four, almost four yeah. which is so weird. It literally feels like I should still be like, I've kept it off for a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I lost 60 pounds doing what Macroholics is now. She um, is the OG. I am. I'm the first Macroholic. She is the <laughs> legitimate first. David, right like, made the Macroholics program in his head mm-hmm. and then implemented implemented it with me mm-hmm. and him, I guess. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, and so I was, like, the guinea pig, sort yeah. of. Um, But... Yeah, so then I did I did CrossFit with David every day and then just lost the weight. And it's really funny because I didn't, like, document any of it. I know, it's so annoying. I know, because <laughs> now that, like, what I do, like, I'm, I work for Macaulay's, I'm a right. coach, so I, I see people document their story, like, every single day. And I'm like, I should have done that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I have, like, no pictures. Yeah. I have, like, no, like... I, like, hardly even remember that time, Yeah, which is weird because it's only, like, four years ago, but I still, yeah. like, when I think about it, I'm, like, I... When you were just so legitimately, like, seclusive, yeah. like, the way you did Yeah, a lot of people like, thought I, like, went and had weight loss surgery because yeah. I, like, literally did not do anything. Yeah. I, like, worked out and slept. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> and ate I what I was it. supposed to. Yeah, I moved and in. What's the most annoying is that I didn't do it with you. <laughs> I, know. I don't know why I didn't do it with I you. I know. Well, <laughs> I, I moved in with Hallie and David yes. because I dropped out of tech. <laughs> so continuing on with my saga of employees that have dropped out of tech, this is number two. <laughs> but, uh, well, actually, I was first. Well, but this is the second <laughs> podcast discussing the dropout rates of macroholics. <laughs> but yeah, no, well, I dropped out of tech because I like hated it and I was miserable yeah. and I was like all sad and <laughs> and I wanted to do something else. I you actually got the, you got the Hallie. It's yeah. okay to drop out of college talk. <laughs> yeah, nobody ever told me it was okay to not go to college until I was like, is it okay if I don't go to college? And everybody was like, uh, yeah. I was like, well, this oh. is awesome. Why didn't you tell me this? <laughs> Why didn't you tell me this? But yeah, no, I wanted to go to cosmetology school. Yeah. And then I decided, and then I started doing CrossFit. And yeah. I was like, wait, I don't want to go to cosmetology school. I want to do CrossFit. Yeah. So then we hired Cass as a coach at CrossFit Lubbock, which was at the time our only business. Um, and uh, she started coaching, and that is how she met. Josh, yeah, the sweetest, my husband, <laughs> the sweetest Josh ever. Yes, uh, it's really funny. I I was coaching, I coached a, a four thirty p.m. class, mm-hmm. and I had a friend named Chase, 
and he um, through CrossFit. Yeah, we met through CrossFit, okay. and he started to like bring his friends to the four thirty class. Mm-hmm. And so he brought Josh one day, and, like, Josh was, like, he's so different now. He, he is so different now. He's, like, really tall, and, like, back then he was extremely, like, lanky yeah. and, like, really goofy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I met him through that, and it's, like, my favorite story is that he was, like, once he started coming to the 430 class, he would have to, like, get off of work and, like, speed to the gym to see me leaving That's the parking so lot, <laughs> like so I would drive by him every day because I would be leaving the gym when he would be getting there because he couldn't so come cute. to the four thirty class all the time. Mm-hmm. But and he was like, I would always like speed over there just so, so I could like wave at you while you were that leaving. So, <laughs> guys, if you do not know Josh, you need to know Josh. He is legitimately the sweetest. He'll be on the podcast soon. Yeah, but he's the best. He is legitimately one of my favorite people in the world, and I am picky, so (laughs) that's saying something. Yeah, no, Josh is the best ever. Josh, love fest, (laughs) conclusion, but um, then he asked you out on a date. Oh, yeah. And Cece didn't want to (laughs) go, you guys. Yeah, he asked me, or we were, like, texting for a while, and then he uh, was like, hey, do you want to go get dinner with me? And I, like, at the time, I, like, didn't really want a boyfriend. Like, I was, like, she was afraid that she would, like, gain her weight back. And yeah, she well, was, I was, like, like, like I'm just, like, that. I'm doing CrossFit right now. Yeah. I don't really want a boyfriend. I'm trying to train, okay? <laughs> yeah. And then Hallie was, like, you have to go. I literally, he I think, or I, she I, said, I think I threatened you with, like, your home. <laughs> like, she was, like, what if that's Harper, my niece, Harper's future husband, or, I mean, uh, future uh, uncle. <laughs> let's just, <laughs> <laughs> what if that's Harper's future uncle? in out there in that car and I was like oh my god fine so. she literally I think she went because I was just being so lit about it <laughs> so and then I, she came home and I was well, y'all this is so funny so Josh is really into like land cruisers this is turning into all about Josh I, know. I don't I don't know why <laughs> what happened but Josh is super into land cruisers and Toyota and cars and stuff and he pulled up to our house at the time and he had a really what I know now is a really cool land cruiser like it had like a snorkel and whatever and it was very cool but at the time I was like what is this machine that he drives yeah it was like really lifted land cruiser and so I legitimately looked out the blinds like a legitimate peeping tom and I was like waiting to see like uh, who is this and um they like left and I was watching the whole time and then I called my mom and she was like what's he like and I was like he drives a weird car and then, and then she came home and literally like the rest is history like he's yeah. been a part of our family since every day. day like every day since then it was so funny because I would go over to his apartment and like I went over there once and Hallie was like oh my god how was it and I was like it was it was great and then I went over there the next day and then I like kept going over there for like four days in a row and she was like so are you just going to go over there every day? And I was, like, so offended. I was, like, no, I'm not going to go over there every day. And then she literally, <laughs> and then I went literally every did. day. <laughs> like, I literally went well, every it's single so day. so funny. I would be, like, so? Like, is this, like, good? And you'd be, like, I don't know. <laughs> but you're going, so it's good, right? Yes, that like, is, I don't know. That don't is know. what happened. She was, like, she was, like, well, you keep going over there, so obviously something is good. And I was, like, I just, I don't know. Don't, like, oh, don't talk about it. <laughs> and so, then, yeah. Yeah, the rest CC is got history. married, and then... <laughs> So um, we so David went to regionals, and then he got done with regionals. And at that point, Macroholics had finally gotten to where it was bigger than just he could handle. Mm-hmm. And I was helping him. Um, but then, if you know David, <laughs> the man gets wild hairs. Mm-hmm. And he literally one night was like, let's get campers <laughs> and go <laughs> On a tour of the bleeping country. <laughs> and then the next day, and we sold the all next our stuff. Day, we literally bought campers. <laughs> and all, like, when this was happening, we were engaged, so we were planning yes. a wedding. Yes. And so Cass and Josh decided, you know, like, they were getting, they were engaged, they were going to get married, and then we were going to go on this cross country uh, RV, Airstream. Airstream tour. 
And, and this is how, this is what good people, Cass and Josh, are. They went with us, okay? <laughs> and they sold their things, and they got in their car, and they drove to Spokane, <laughs> Washington with me, guys. This is the litmus that <laughs> Cass and Josh are for me. So fun. And so we went, and um, while we were going, well, while we were planning everything, Dave and I were talking in the car one day, and he was like, well, I want them to go on the Airstream tour with us. Um, but like, I feel like they need an income to like be able to sustain themselves while we're gone. And David was like, I want to hire them both to help with macroholics. And I, at the time was like, no, (laughs) I was like, I don't want to like, we're barely staying afloat ourselves. I don't want to give money away. And he was like, I promise, like, we're going to bet on them and it's going to be the best decision we ever made. And I hate it when my husband is right, (laughs) but he was right. And so, um, we gave them their job offer and they took it. And so they were our first employees. Cass was the first macroholic. Like this is the story of macroholics can't be told without Cass and Josh by proxy. No. So um, <laughs> it is, she is the one that comments on your screenshots every day. That's me. Everybody's always like, can you stop being so positive all the time? <laughs> she's like, no, I literally. I'm like, no, I will, I will not ever do that. I'm sorry. So she's, um, she's the one that, that comments on your screenshots if you post to the page every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, she works 365 Never a day off. That's true. She has a mean old boss oh, that God, makes her work every day. <laughs> and she is the best. She is oh. the most genuine. And if you are a member of Macroholics, you are familiar with Cass and how great she is. Um, but she had her own share of struggles with losing weight and being overweight. And the, the journey to where she is uh-huh. has been fraught with ups and downs. Yes. yes did Weight Watchers when you were in high school yeah. and stuff like that. That's and so weird to think about. I know. <laughs> yeah, I did I did do Weight Watchers for, like, a little bit, I guess, when I was in high school, like, oh, my, like se- my senior year. Yeah, that. I think I did lose, like, 20 pounds, but then yeah. I gained it back whenever yeah. I stopped. Yeah. Um, I think that was senior year. I feel like you, more than other people, that, I mean, I guess I've just known you longer and more closely, but, like, you have kind of always wanted the body that you have. Yes. Like, you, like, did not... Well, because I was, like, I was, like... I mean, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. Toot, toot. (laughs) But I... Insert toot sound effect, please. I was, um... (laughs) You made me lose my train of thought. (laughs) Oh, 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 I was was athletic. Yes. Like, my whole, like, life growing up. And I always played sports. And so I was never, like, petite. And Trinity and Hallie, both my sisters, were very petite. Spoiler alert. (laughs) Not that way anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but the macroholics. Work. No, and like my whole life, everybody was like, "You're just not little like your sister." Like, yeah, and, I, and that yeah. really like bothered me because oh, yeah. I was like, "Well, I want to be little like my sisters, so that's rude. Don't say that." <laughs> and like, but y'all, literally, when Cass was a newborn, I remember I was there. We went to her newborn appointment with the doctor, and the doctor was like, "This child has quads." Like. <laughs> A newborn <laughs> with quads. And if you've seen Cassidy's quads, she still has quads. Let's say, spoiler <laughs> alert, there are some, we call her Quadzilla, because they are there and very there. But <laughs> she was always just kind of, like, built more athletically. Yeah, like, I got I like got my dad's jeans yeah. and my everybody else got my mom's, which I, but now I'm, like, and really dad's jeans are way bigger than mom's. Let me just say. <laughs> oh god! I but tried to make a dad joke, and I it got just it. sounded too literal. Oh, so. I got it. But um, no, yeah. So I was always like athletically built, and like really like always wanted to be like small. And I remember people telling me like, "You just won't be that way. Yeah. Like you won't. You're just never gonna be like you got that. big bones. Yeah. Like you're just that's Which just is a spoiler alert. A lie. <laughs> if you yeah. believe that, I'm sorry, but. Have, come have a DEXA scan, and I'll tell you if you have big bones, because you don't. It's so funny. But, yeah, so, like, people just told me, like, I don't even remember who, but yeah. people told me my whole life, like, you're just never going to look like them. And, like, I was like, which I guess is kind of true, but, yeah. like. Because now the shoe's on the other foot. Me and Trent are like, how do we look like you? Can you help us? But I just, like, I mean, I'm not, like, skinny by any means, but it's just, like, I thought I thought that that meant like you're gonna be fat for your whole yeah. life, which yeah. like is not something that you know you want to hear, especially when you're like 
a, young, a kid. Impressionable yeah. Girl. Yeah. So <laughs> um, that was kind of, I guess you could say, a struggle of mine. Mm-hmm. But yeah. now I'm like, well, guess what? Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's why Cass is so passionate about helping people um, lose weight and on their journeys because I feel like she has seen both sides of it. You know, like yeah. she's been the girl that everyone said, like, that's just not for you. And then she's gone on to prove it. And she wants to be the one that tells you like you, you, you can get here. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like, I'm always like, I know people say this all the time. Like if I can do it, you can do yeah. it. But I'm like, I really didn't think that I could do it and yeah. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like my favorite thing is yeah. like seeing people like prove to themselves mm-hmm. that like they can do it. Yeah. You know, like and that's they like will if they do if they we, put it in. Yeah. yeah. Put they, in the work. <laughs> if you do what David says. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you will lose the weight. Which again, it's hard when it's your husband. But <laughs> that's fine. Um, so yeah, I think that is there anything oh, I wanted to talk, um, Gwen on the page had talked about the importance of weighing your food mm-hmm. and um like the scales we recommend and stuff like that. Right. And um, we have an Amazon list. If you are listening to this or if you are on YouTube, there will be a link in the doodly-doo <laughs> with um, our Amazon list. So you should check that out. But there is a scale on there called, I think, the My Way. I don't know. It looks like a tank. It's <laughs> yeah. a huge it is a big scale. dang scale. But it is the best and it's the most consistent and it plugs into the wall, so you don't have to mess with batteries mm-hmm. and all that. So it's very nice. That is um, a good skill. And it's also, like, elevated, so if you put, like, a bowl on it, you don't have to, like, play tricks to get the weight. Yeah. And so um, that, Gwen, is the scale that I have and the scale that I recommend. Um, Agreed. And I think we just need to talk about the importance of that. Um, Burgundy had shared a picture of the cashews. Yeah, whatever. two handfuls of cashews. One was... Like a, a weighed out amount. It was like one one handful was eighty five calories, and then one was like a handful that you would grab, mm-hmm. and it was like two hundred and fifty five calories or something. And if you look at it, they don't look vastly different. Yeah, I mean, you can tell that that one has more than the other, but not by much. You wouldn't <laughs> think two hundred calories more. Yeah, it's, you know, it's like so important. And I think that's so like applicable, especially to fats, like things oh, like yes. you know nuts, and nuts seeds, and seeds, and, and peanut, peanut butter. butter. <laughs> We're not twins, I promise. <laughs> um, but uh, the, you know, I think people just think like, oh, this is close enough. Like it's yeah. about half a cup or whatever, yeah. and like it's probably double that. Yeah, it's it's definitely eye opening and something that you like is crucial to your results. Like yeah. you have you have to weigh your food. Yeah. Um, and if you don't, then like your results are going to be really slow. And or your calories are going to be lower yeah. because as, you know, we adjust your calories based off of the, um, like, percentage of weight percentage loss. Of weight loss. So if you're losing less at a higher, at a lower, like. So if you are eating 1,500 calories, <laughs> like let's say 1,500 calories is your, is your thing, uh, your target, and we see that you're eating all the way to it, you're eating all 1,500 calories every day, but you are gaining weight, then that tells us you need to reduce your calories. we need to take your calories down if if you're doing if you're everything not, yeah, accurately. Yeah. Well, in which we always ask, is correct. everything weighed out? Is everything logged? And if the answer is like yes, I'm weighing everything and like hundred percent, yeah. Then, then I'm we gonna need less calories. Yeah, like yeah. it's just science. Like if you're not in a caloric deficit, then you're not gonna lose weight. Right. So that's when we reduce calories. And if there are things that you aren't weighing or like maybe you don't even know it that you're logging like like if something has two servings in it and you're you don't know that and you're only logging one serving and you're eating the whole thing that's like there's just like tons of stuff like that and I mean I think that's like people like see people eating 1500 calories and that's something and then people see people eating 1600 calories and a lot of times that's the difference in weighing your food and not Uh you know what I mean like I think that's like I think that that is something that people like it like the handful of cashews like if say you even like counted them out one time and you're like this is what it looks like okay like I'm just gonna do that from now on yeah like you would tell me probably that you weighed it out you know what you're eating but at the same time like the variance is enough especially if you're someone that like doesn't work out or someone that doesn't have like as much of a caloric deficit if your caloric deficit is smaller like you have to be really pinpointed Mm -hmm. with that because the the more accurate you are with your logging and with your weighing and with your measuring those things are what climb your calories yes and so i think that you know anybody that 
has a hard time with um, losing calories and feeling like discouraged with their progress, like you can just never be too accurate. Mm-hmm. Like there's just like no limit where I'm like, okay, you know what? That's too much. Like, yeah. you know, you're just like, just everything you put in your mouth, weigh it on a food scale. Yeah. And then like, like I think the next, you know, thing to talk about from there is when you're eating out. Yeah. Like we don't want you to bring a food scale to right. your cousin's birthday dinner. Like, I mean, obviously you can if you want, but yeah. like you definitely don't have to. And that's when we put into place like the our estimation right. method, which right. we have on our FAQ. Yes. <laughs> Check out the FAQ, which is also in the diddly do. <laughs> Number 14 on the FAQ. But anyways. Um, Throwing the numbers around, guys. It is. So it's like you have to use the estimation yeah. method. And I think a lot of people get confused about it. So yes. if you are on Macroholics, um, you, you know that you add – like, it's like the 1.25 method is what it's called. Right. But that doesn't mean you just add 0. 0.25 to you add whatever. You percent Yes. So, like, if you're eating chicken and you're like, this looks about, like, four ounces or five ounces of chicken, then you need to take 1.25 times five. Right. And log. Not 5.25. Correct. Right. So, I think that's something that sometimes people yes. don't understand. Or, like, a, a, good, a good one is um, sushi. Like, mm-hmm. you can find, like, let's say you're going to eat a California roll. Instead right. of just logging 1.25 of a roll, you would log, let's say there's eight pieces. Mm-hmm. You would log how, so, like, eight. you would log. Uh, we don't do math in our heads <laughs> here, but let's just pretend that we do. You would log one times eight, and you would log that many pieces of sushi. Yes. 1.25 times eight, sorry. Yes, <laughs> So it's not, it's not, you're not estimating by just adding 0.25 to right. whatever you're eating. You're adding 25% more calories to whatever caloric item you're eating. And I, so, I mean, that's why, that's why we're here. Like, we want to help you guys do that. We know that it's not always easy to just, like, go out to eat and do math. Like, I, I get that. Like, yeah. so. And that's if you, like, want to just snap a picture of yeah. your food and send it to us or post it on the page. Right. We'll tell you exactly we what to log. We'll give you the My Fitness Pal log. Like the screenshot, the screenshot of what we, we would log. Yes. And, like, it's going to hurt your feelings. It is going to hurt your feelings, yes. <laughs> a lot of times. Or That's like, why, like, I choose, like, as much as possible not to estimate. Yeah. Like, I will legitimately boycott, like, mm-hmm. if I have to. Yeah, you have to, you have to, like, when you're done eating, say, like, there is no way that this is not more calories. Like and, and I, that level of honesty with yourself is hard to get to. Yeah, like... Like, because there's, there, there's two different ways to do that. There's a way to look at your plate and go, there's no way. Yeah. There's no way. And there's there's another way to look at it where you're like, there is no, no way. possible like, way. There, you know, there, those those are two very different responses. Yeah. Like, one is like, there's no way. And, and like, then there's like, there's no freaking way. Yeah. And, like, it's hard... I don't know. It's hard to do that, but, like, you have to think, like, at restaurants, even though they have, like, portioned out, like, like a scoop is probably, like, four ounces at a restaurant or something right. like that. Like, they're still not weighing it, yeah. and also they're cooking it with, like, butter or oil that you Which don't Which is going to be uh, indetermined, you know? Yeah, like, so they're going to, like, add in another scoop of butter one time or yeah, something because like, like the pan needs more butter right, like you exactly, know like they're yeah. not just doing it to make you fat but like it's just like sometimes I feel like they are. sometimes <laughs> it, I feel very attacked yeah. by restaurants so like you just you have to account for that no yes. matter what and it's not fun whenever you've already logged 800 calories and you're sure. and you're like oh my god yep I still need to log 200 calories of especially if, butter you, did, or if something. you didn't log before yeah and like that can get it's, it's really hard when it's the difference in going over and not is logging 0.25 of yeah. your baked potato. Yeah. It's like, mm, like, I just, it's fine. Like, yeah. it's not fine. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, you have to, that level of honesty is just crucial mm-hmm. for success. And then, like, and, and on another note, is, like, what we don't want is you to be obsessing over your right. food and obsessing over, like, oh, my God, did I do that right? right. Did, like, did they put extra butter? Like, right. what you need to do is, Control what you can control. So mm-hmm. that means weighing your food no matter what, where, whenever you can. Yes. Like if you're at home eating, like weigh your food. Right. And then whenever you're out to dinner on a date or like for Special a birthday, occasion. yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Or if you're just out for no reason, um, use the 1.25 method, estimate high, and then log it and move on. Yeah. <laughs> like that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, like yep. you enjoyed your dinner. You don't want to be sitting there like, you know, thinking about your food while you're yes. like eating or you know and macroholics like it is all about finding freedom with food that mm-hmm. is what that is why it was created that is why it 
works. That is why it is important is because I don't want you taking your food scale and weighing every last gram and not talking to your family at Christmas because you're so concerned with how accurate your food log is. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a time and a place for that. And if that's your priority, I support you. Yes. But what I want you to have is the ability to say, look, this is not a marathon. I mean, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. I hate marathons if that's not, that subtext was not obvious. But the, you know, the, the longevity of it and the commitment to eating this way as a way of life and as a lifestyle should trump the necessity for obsession. Yeah. Like, you should say, like, if I gain weight today because I didn't estimate, great. Like, yeah. I'm going to own that. Yeah, I know that, like, I know I didn't estimate enough. And right. so if I am, like, gaining a little tiny bit of weight, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. And it'll come off when I'm more accurate when I have my food scale. Yeah, and, like, that's just, I, I think a lot of people get super into their, like, weight loss journey or fitness journey or whatever, and they're like, oh, my God, I can't, like, I, I can't go out to eat because, like, I don't know for sure how many mm -hmm. calories it is. And I I would like to, like, help that not be yeah. the case because I... Yeah, what we like, what, you know, I, what I always say is every diet, every mindset of, lo of weight loss has um, some sort of restriction. Like, if you're keto, like, carbs are the restriction. If you're vegetarian meat is the, you know, restriction, whatever. Everything has to have a restriction to find that caloric deficit. Like we talked yep. about, it's just science. That's how it works. So what for macroholics, we try to limit the restriction as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And the only restriction that I feel like macroholics has is the effort of accuracy. Yeah. Like that is what you're giving up. And to me, it's worth giving up, like, a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, and a little bit of concern with my food log so that I can eat a Snickers bar at night. Yeah. Like, that, to me, is worth it. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a lot of friends that's like, it's not worth it. Like, I would rather just never eat sugar ever again. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that sounds like <laughs> what hell is. But apparently, <laughs> if that's what's not for you, yeah. then good for you. Yeah. And you can also do that on Macroholics, by the way. Exactly. But I think that, like, the, um, you know, the restriction is the accuracy and so if you can wrap your head around the fact that, like, I get to eat these fun foods, I get to do this forever, always, no matter where I'm at, no matter if it's my grandma's birthday or I'm home eating chicken, they're all going to be the same amount of effort for accuracy. Yeah. And as long as you can get your mind around that, I think that that will contribute to your success so much because you always end up in the same place. Right. You know, um, so... I, you know, if you guys have questions for Cass, if you want to reach out to her, if you're watching this on YouTube or Instagram, um, she is always available. Mm -hmm. She is quick to respond. Yes. Um, so uh -huh. if you have questions about Macroholics or about her weight loss journey or about her sweet husband or puppy. Oh, we didn't even talk about my puppy. We didn't puppy. even talk <laughs> about Pippin. Um, there is no time or place that she will not talk to you correct yeah just send me a message send me an instagram message send me an email, <laughs> an email. Me <laughs> text me on the business signal. phone <laughs> yeah i will i'd be so happy to talk to anybody answer anybody's questions if you just want to you know be my friend that's cool too <laughs> cc's the best friend but she already has a best friend she's taken <laughs> so if you're looking for a best friend you're gonna have to find somebody else okay <laughs> but um Jared's going to love how much I've yelled on this, guys. See, so I'll just give him some that. props. Um, if so you're wearing headphones, I'm so sorry. If you're wearing headphones, I bought really nice equipment so I don't damage your ears permanently, but I still may. So, um, But so we will wrap this one up, and then we will be here next week with another coach. I don't know who, but we will be here with another coach. And um, we will catch you guys next time. Thanks so much. Bye.